let me structure is a structure or a structure of a molecule that shows the bonds it shows the bonds and lone pair and lone pair of electrons within a molecule within a molecule okay so any structure that shows us all the bonds all the bonds and all the long pairs of electrons in a molecule is stemmed as Lewis structure. Okay, the structure was proposed by a scientist, an American scientist, whose name is Gilbert Gilbert Newton Lewis. All right, now uh, let's take a few examples to see how we can draw the structure or the Lewis structure of some simple um, compounds. So let's take a look at um, CH4, a very popular. Um, a molecule called methane, and there are like various steps. So uh, I'm going to list up um, list of the step now. A various step um, in which we use to determine the uh, the Lewis structure of a molecule. Okay, there are various rules um, we need to follow in order to write the or draw the Lewis structure of a molecule. Let's say CH three and let's say CH four. The first thing you have to do is calculate the number of valence electron. You see the rules over here. Calculate number of valence electrons. What are valence electrons? Valence electrons are the electrons that are involved in forming a bond. Okay. When you look at carbon, carbon has a total of six electrons. Right conversion of carbon, we have two, four. So that means that the valence electron of carbon is four. That's valence electron simply means outermost electron. So valence electrons are electrons on the outermost shell. Okay, so we have four valence electrons for carbon. For hydrogen, it has just one electron. Okay, also we have four hydrogen atoms. We say one times four. That will give me a total of four. So four plus four will give me a total of eight valence electrons. So that a total of eight valence electrons in CH4. Next thing we have to do is determine the central atom and the terminal atom. Terminal atom means the atoms at the end. The central atom means the atom at the center. So will it be carbon or will it be hydrogen? If you read here, you see the central atom is the atom in the least electricity, which means the ability of them to receive electrons, okay? But except hydrogen, which means that hydrogen can never ever be the central atom. It can only act as a what? As a terminal atom. So that means central atom here is carbon. So we have carbon as a central atom. And obviously, the terminal atoms are going to have the hydrogen. Since we have four hydrogen, I will write hydrogen four times, four times different positions. So these are the four hydrogen atoms we have. Now, if the hydrogen atom is forming a bond, a what we call a covalent bond with carbon. Okay, so let me use this green line to represent the covalent bond. So this is a covalent bond formed by the carbon atom with the hydrogen atoms. Okay, so Every bond you see, every covalent bond is formed by electrons, by two electrons. So here we have two electrons. Here we have two electrons. Here we have two electrons. And here we also have two electrons. So that's a total of how many electrons? A total of eight electrons. So when you subtract it from our total, we are going to have what? Zero. So once we get to zero, we know that the whatever we have here is the Lewis structure. So this is the Lewis structure for methane. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Let's look at SIF4. Let's take a look at SIF4. What does the rule say? The rule say we should first calculate the number, total number of billions and it silicon over here on my table. Silicon is over here. Okay, that is number 14. That will be two eight and four so ends silicon has a valence electron of four that's four valence electrons okay flowing on the other hand is over here okay over here that's nine that will give me two comma seven that means that flowing has a total of what seven valence electrons but since we have four fluid atoms we're going to multiply this by four this should give me 28 28 plus 4 will give me a total of 32 valence electrons. Okay. The next thing we have to do now is to determine the central atom and the terminal atom. Will silicon be the central or will flowing be the central? And looking at this now, the rule says that 
the one with the least LH negativity, which will it means I don't know that as LH negativity simply means the ability of an atom to like gain electrons. You understand? So one thing you should know is that LH negativity it's it increases across the period. And as you go from left to right on your periodic table, LH negativity EN increases. While it decreases down the group. So when I was going down the group, it's what it will decrease down the group. Okay. Looking at silicon and fluorine, we have silicon over here. We have silicon over here and we have fluorine over here. Okay, fluorine has a higher nuclear antit. Now I said that it increases this way. I mean the silicon we have a lower less negativity compared to what? Compared to fluorine. So hence silicon will be my central atom. So I have silicon in the center and I have my fluorine as the terminal atoms around my silicon atom. Okay, so I said earlier that there will be a bond formed between silicon and fluorine. So with bonds formed like this between silicon and fluorine, the bonds are going. And I explained that these covalent bonds are formed by what? Electrons. That means in every bond you see, there are a total of what? Of two electrons. Okay. So if you count now, how many are here in total? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's remove the eight electrons from our total of 32 valence electrons. We're going to have 24 valence electrons. Now, the next thing to do now, which is the third step now, is to assign the leftover electrons to the terminal atoms. Why are we doing that? So doing that in order to complete their octet configuration as a rule that every atom should have a total of eight electrons around, although there are some exemptions. Exemption, a very good exemption is your hydrogen. Hydrogen does not have eight electrons around it. And some other atoms also also uh, the kind of um, the kind of exemptions to this rule. Talk about that in the tab videos. So we are going to assign the many electrons now to the terminal atoms as this fluorine atoms, not to complete as their yeah, octet configuration. If you look at this chlorine here, I think look at this chlorine over here. It has just two electrons around it. They must have eight in total. So what do we do? We assign these electrons to each of them, to each of them in order to complete their configuration. We will assign the electrons in form of what? In form of load here. So let's go in green. One, two. So I'll assign, assign three lone pairs to this flowing plus these two, making it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Making it eight with less electrons. So you can see it now has completed its, its octet configuration. So let's do that to the rest. We've completed the octet configuration of all the terminal atoms. And let's see how many how many electrons did I use in total. I used six per flowing, so six times four will give me 24. So let's remove 24 from our, from our remainder here. What do we have? We have zero. If you look at this now, you can see all atoms here as a spike. Loving here as a stable octet. This, this, this as well have stable octet. Look at the silicon in the center as well. Silicon has two electrons here. Two, 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 two. That's also it. You know, silicon is also being the octet true. That's a stable octet configuration. So hence, this is the structure for SI. F4. So let's take a look at some other examples, some other examples of Lewis structure. Let's try to draw the structure of this popular compound. Let's start with the first one, which is water, H2O. The first step, as I explained earlier, is to count the number of valence electrons. In hydrogen, we have one valence electron, but since we have two hydrogen atoms, that will be times two. And in oxygen, we have a total of six valence electrons from the configuration, two, six. So it has six valence electrons, okay? So I moved up two plus six will give me a total of eight valence electrons, all right? And the next step is to determine which of the atoms are or is the central atom, okay? I told you guys earlier that hydrogen can never be the central atom. So obviously the oxygen is the central atom. So we have oxygen and central atom. And we have hydrogen atoms as as the terminal atoms. Okay. And I also explained that every bond you see, every bond you see contains how many electrons? Two electrons. So we have two here, we have two here. That is a total of four. So subtracting four from here, we are going to have four electrons left. The next step is to assign the 
electron that is left to the terminal atoms. We note that, and why are we doing that? We are doing that in order to complete the octet configuration of the terminal atoms. But unfortunately, hydrogen does not obey the octet true. That means I cannot give any other electron to hydrogen. So the next rule or the next step says that we should we should assign the remaining valence electrons to the central atom to the central atom in form of lone pairs. So I'm going to assign this um, four electrons, that means two lone pairs, to the central atom. We have a lone pair and we have the lone pair. So this is a lavish structure for water. Okay, let's take a look at the other example. We have ammonia, NH3. Again, the first step is to calculate the number of valence electrons. I think by now you get the idea of what valence electrons are. Nitrogen has a total of seven electrons, so the configuration should be two, five, I mean, the valence electron that Angelina has is 5. Angelina has just one electron, so times 3, that will be 3. 3 plus 5 will give me a total of 8 valence electrons. The next step now is to determine the words, the central atom, the central and the terminal atom. Again, Angelina can never be the central atom, so hence Angelina is the central atom, so let's put that up. We have nitrogen as central atom, and we have three hydrogen atoms as a terminal, so we have hydrogen. We have hydrogen, we have hydrogen, so three hydrogen atoms as the terminal atom. So I told you that every bond you see is made up of two electrons. So two, 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 that's six. Move six from eight, we're going to have a total of two electrons remain. Going back to the um, going to the dot step, it says assign left to electrons to the terminal at to the terminal atoms. Terminal atoms are this, but they don't obey the octet truth. So they only have a total of two electrons. I'm like, I'm not assigning electrons to them. So that takes us to the, um, the last rule. That's the fourth rule, which says assign the left divided electrons from step three to the central atoms in form of lone pairs. So since we have two electrons left, I will assign it to assign to the central atom in form of lone pair. So this is the leverage structure for ammonia.